Hey there! Are you an artist, author, creator, or a cultural worker? If you are, you probably heard about copyright before, but you might still not really understand it very well. Perhaps we can help you with that. Here, we'll show you how copyright affects cultural and creative work and how you can handle it. So first, let's be clear about what we mean by cultural and creative work. Studies show that if you're an artist or a cultural worker, you like to dare, try new things, you have a risky artistic spirit, and the creative act is essential to you. You see your work as a positive activity that you enjoy rather than something you have to do to earn money. Creative work is not just about financial income. It involves other types of rewards such as the autonomy to manage your time or the freedom to make your own choices. You probably are highly educated. Unfortunately, this usually has little influence on your creative career. You most likely work part-time and may hold multiple jobs to complement the low and uncertain income from your artistic work. And like you, there are a lot of other creators, maybe too many for the market, so there's a lot for audiences and clients to choose from, and as work supply increases, payments tend to fall. Finally, to develop a strong creative career, you need to meet the right people who can help you gain a good reputation. Those networks also influence your artistic practice somehow, so you usually need to be very flexible and adaptable. So although cultural and creative work might be seen as a positive kind of work, it also results in a lot of uncertainty. Only very few creators and cultural workers manage to reach the spotlight and become so-called superstars. And once they do, their work becomes more of a response to market pressures than the result of artistic inspiration. But what's copyright got to do with this? Copyright is a set of laws that protects different kinds of intellectual creation. Since the 18th century, it keeps a balance between private incentive for creation and public access. Copyright protects the authors by making sure they get compensation for their artistic, literary, or scientific work for a certain period of time, after which the work falls into public domain. But recently, Copyright extension and scope have become stronger and more complex. Also, the different territorial characteristics of copyright laws make it difficult to negotiate between countries. And this is why, in the creative economy, a set of laws, originally designed to protect authors, has turned more into a sort of currency. So, how does copyright affect the cultural sector? Consider this graphic explanation. Right in the middle, there are the original authors, the core creators. Around them, the producers, agents, programmers, and distributors. These intermediaries assist you in your creative work, helping you make it possible and improving the way you reach your audience without having to bother with tasks you often don't like or don't know how to do. Sometimes creators themselves accumulate these functions. You might find an artist who is also a producer, an actress that is also her own agent, but hardly the creator becomes a distributor. And when they are, that means they probably became superstars somewhere along the way. This means that in general, core creators exchange their copyrights for those intermediary services. Because of their low income, they usually have a weak bargaining power, thus ending up with the smallest, if any, chunk of revenues generated by their own creations. Recalling the excessive supply of creative workers, we can see that there are far more creators, producers, agents, or even programmers when compared to distributors. However, it's this thin layer of distributors that has more powers to enforce copyright and control revenues. This means that, instead of protecting authors, copyright has mostly been used by major businesses to control cultural production and who can have access to it. So, are artists condemned to be either under-recognized poor workers or rich, powerful superstars? No. 
between the mainstream approach of taking a defensive position towards copyright and the opposite possibility of dedicating all your work to public domain, there are many options. You can opt for a more or less loose strategy. There are no secret formulas and no guarantee that one strategy is more efficient than the other. You can always combine both protective and open positions, depending on the project and actors at stake. What is important to understand is that you can set the rules of your own game. And this is where open licenses can help. Wait, what are open licenses? For those of you who don't know, open licenses are agreements which allow artists to set permissions for others to use their creative work. Creative Commons are a set of open licenses that fill a gap between copyrights automatic all rights reserved and public domains no rights reserved, granting a certain autonomy for artists to decide in what terms they want their work to circulate. Creative Commons offers free, ready-to-use options to license your work and it is up to you to decide which ones to use. But how does that help my creative career? As we have seen, recognition, networks, time and artistic freedom are worthy and interchangeable values for you to consider. But if you also want your creative work to be sustainable and have a positive impact for you and those who you work with, always protecting your copyright is not the only way to go. Here are some strategies to manage the value of your work with open licenses. Distributing your work with an open license can help you reach larger audiences within a low budget and even achieve possible professional opportunities. By sharing some of your work for free, you can attract clients for other services or products you also develop. You can generate revenues through other indirect ways such as advertising, partnerships or consultancy. People may have access to samples or beta versions of your work and help you improve it, getting a discount for their contribution in the final product. And by creating a community around your service, you can make your work grow bigger and trustful, improving your reputation. As you can see, there are lots of possibilities. You only need to be creative about the strategies you choose. Creative Commons helps you promote this transparent mindset of sharing and referencing the people and work you love. Now, think of your own projects today. Can you hold them in the long run? Are they generating the value you expected for everyone, including yourself? Are they sustainable? It is up to you to decide what to do with your own copyright, how you want to manage it, and in what terms you want to share your work. Strategies, rules, agreements, and laws are defined by and for people. And the way you set your own terms has an impact in the world. So now that you know a bit more about how copyright influences your creative life, what role do you want to play in the cultural scene? Thank you.